Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Design for 3D Printing. Uh, today the prompt that was given was to create a base for a lamp. And this lamp is going to have uh, multiple different types of overall shades put on top of it. So we wanted to create a base that is fairly universal, that many different styles could be placed on. And when you're ever you're designing something for high variability or high adaptability, where it needs to plug in with a lot of different things that still look good, you wanna work with really primary sort of shapes. So a cube or a cylinder. There's actual, actually a whole sort of industrial design component to this that we're not gonna focus on too much here, but we're gonna start out with a square. Uh, since we're, it's gonna be turned into a lot of different options, we wanna start with something really, really basic. So we'll start with a square here and It'd be easiest to start with a cube. Um, that is a nice general shape that works fine. However, since this will be a cube with a large lampshade sticking out the top, you don't want this base to be that big. You want it to be kind of uh, understated and sort of hidden. So there's actually a, a minimal d depth that we can have because we have to put a lamp socket into this. And I'm actually gonna measure that up right here right now. And that depth is three inches from tip to top. Uh, I'm actually going to decrease that even further because the socket is able to stick out a bit. So the minimum depth that we can actually have is 2.5 inches right there. Now that's pretty good, but that is actually also almost too subtle. So I'm going to go for three inches um, because I think that'll be a better ratio with kind of the lampshades that we're dealing with that'll be going on top of this. So there's that. Okay, cool. So that's a nice little box, nice and simple, nice, easy cube. Uh, what we want to do is design in now the uh, basic socket for the lamp. And this will be pretty easy. We'll just put a hole in the top here. And I know that it needs to be 38 millimeters in diameter. So that'll be that. Oh, wait a second. I don't want to use that sketch. From the bottom, I want to cut a hole because the socket doesn't have, uh, you can't run wires with it. It has a plug and the socket finished up with it. So it's a fully finished unit um, and the plug has to come out the bottom. So you always wanna start with the smallest hole first. And this one is 32 millimeters. There we go. Um, and we wanna start with that first because we don't wanna to have to extrude something out if you can get away with just cutting stuff. Uh, distance, go through all of that. Reverse the direction, there we go. There, that's that basic hole. And then maybe it'll let me grab that old sketch, yeah. So the depth of this one, we want, are gonna design this uh, lamp socket to stick out slightly. That way we don't have to make this box so thick. And it actually helps in a, a number of other ways too. Inches, minus 1.5 inches. So about 35 millimeters. There we go. All right, so that's all set there now. Okay, so that's good. So we have this uh, small DIY lamp socket going into the bottom here and its plug is able to go out this bottom hole. That's all fine and dandy. However, now what we want to do is we want the wire to be able to come out the back. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, depending on how you're ultimately making this thing. You can do it like this, and a way I like to do it is actually to use a slot because it's a very fast, easy way to get some chamfers. Um, you want it to always want to go wider or bigger on your first try in order to make sure that uh, you have enough room because it's way easier to glue something in than to remove it. So we're going to start here with uh, seven millimeters wide and we know overall it only needs to be about a half inch deep or so. So, oh, we're going to actually take that to 0.275 there, inches. There we go. So um, this is version number one and we're gonna go all the way up to the other side of this hole. There we are. So there's a nice little slot that the cord could come out through. But the problem with this is that this doesn't really hold the cord, which I don't really like very much. Uh, the cord actually has to be glued up in there, which means you have a secondary manufacturing process that can be tough to get done. So actually, we're not gonna use that. I'm going to suppress that and we're gonna start again. And there's a better way of getting this done that I like a lot more. And that is, uh, basically a hook, kind of a one directional slot here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this larger diameter set of deals here. Another circle right here. It'll get a little bit clearer what I'm doing as it gets in here. But this whole slot, this hook um, slot is gonna have all these align so that a cord is able to wrap up and into the part a bit here. 
Um, just like this. Hang on, let me set the dimensions of that so that nothing's wobbling around. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's not a big deal. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and take a line off of that going down there and a line of that going off down there. And we're gonna want those tangential to these circles, respectively. And we'd like those lines to be parallel to each other. That way these should be able to drive the dimensions of a lot of the rest of it. Um, and five millimeters, I believe is the correct. Yeah, five will be fine. Uh, I'm actually gonna go 5.5 just to give us a little bit more room because again, you always want more room rather than too little. Uh, I'm gonna wrap that all the way around. Again, this will get a little bit clearer what I'm doing um, as we go along here, but I'm gonna, I'm just adjusting a couple things. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna extrude that, extrude that, extrude that. Wait, finish my sketch, there we go. Extrude that, extrude that and go distance to object to the center hole. And now you can see what we've done is that the cord is able to wrap up into here and then wrap underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and suppress this. The reason being is since this part is being printed on a 3D printer, it means this whole surface is going down and you never want these large broad surfaces against the build plate of the printer because they create opportunities for defects and large bed adhesion and they're tough to automate. Uh, for mass production and we really want this to be mass producible so we're going to go ahead and take a chamfer here and go up like this and go uh we should be able to go about 50 or so okay it's going to stop us i'm actually going to go all the way back and suppress this eh i want to do that either i'm going to make that less deep let's go minus one inch just like so because it has to be able to go in there so that is our limiting factor but then we'll go ahead and take this chamfer like this. Can I go to 40 yet? There we go. That's what I want right there. So you see, I have this nice big old cone here. And what this has done is removed a bunch of the baseline material. So we don't have that big old build initial uh, build layer, um, but we'll have a nice clean inner layer. And if you want to cover this up, you can cover it with felt or something like that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and take I believe this sketch, oh no, that was the very simple one. I want to take this all the way up here to the front. Come on, let me, will it allow me? There we go, it will allow me. So now this is the reason to use something like this hook. This hook is way more flexible and allowable for this kind of internal feature than the other small ones. All right, cool, so that's the baseline shape. That is the base of this lamp that we can use and now, we're going to optimize this a bit to make sure that each one of the core features is as reliable and solid as it can be. And for that, it's always about filleting. You always want to fillet everything just as much as you possibly can because rounded edges are our friends. So we want to make sure they're all smoothed out because it creates a much better surface, a much better look and makes it much more manufacturable. Around here, we obviously don't want sharp edges because it could potentially grab the cord. If somebody like jerked it off the shelf, you don't want it to tear through the electrical cord. That would not be very good. Um, I'm going to take that. Yeah, I want that to be two millimeters. I'm going to go back into the design of that thing. Here we go. So I'm going to take this up higher and make that um, 15. There we go. So that gives us a lot more room. I'm going to see if I can increase the diameter here a little bit because what I want to do is I want to increase the space. There we go, right there. That'll be fine. You can see I didn't really heavily dimension that because I wanted, I was trying to thicken this up right here so that that isn't a potential danger because that is sort of a break off point. But again, the cord should never be under any major stress. So it shouldn't be a big issue. Okay, so there's that. Uh, we have filleted all of those. I'm gonna fill at the bottom of this again to kind of catch the cord. Um, it can be really big because it's at the top anyway, so we don't want it. I'm gonna fill at the bottom down here just to clean up some stuff. And it just has to be small and subtle, so that's okay. Well, actually, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, because that messes with my my other thing right there okay so now we have this nice box and if this box was right where we were stopping we would put a fillet right there oh wait nope let's go ahead and go right here right here right here and right here make that five or one depending on what you want to do even even if you don't want a large fillet there you should always should fill it because it improves the tool path for the machine so if you want this nice square box that's the place to stop right there um, and maybe fill at the top a little bit here um, and i'm going to give that like two or one there too just a little bit now 
uh, we will have this base with a bulb sticking out the top in front of a nice uh, rated housing, and then you can put a lampshade on top of it. So that's all well and good. Now, but there is an issue here. What if you want a different shape? Well, now I'm gonna go through here and create a few new shapes. All right, so in order to create these other shapes, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suppress these features. And the reason we went for cube is because it's really easy to take this and then go ahead and just add some fillets to the outer side that are 2.5 inches. And now we have a cylinder, which is a nice, quick, easy way of getting to that point. And then we'll go ahead and smooth this out a little bit and we'll go to two. Okay, so that'll, that'll be good. And now we can go ahead and save this. And with this one, uh, again, we wanna make sure that we go around and put a fillet on the bottom, about one, just like so. Okay, cool. So that's all set there. Um, and then if we wanna go even further, we can take this and make that about uh, 1.5 inches and now we have a dome and if i wanted to shorten it up i can do even more with that i mean i could push it a couple different directions um but that's actually pretty good i'm i'm quite happy with that um and if i want to push this a little bit more then we could take this up to one inch just like so and now you have this nice little curved shape that's really uh just very very delightful um nice smooth it's uh it's got some directionality to it which you kind of want this asymmetry in the vertical direction that way people kind of know what to follow um it's again it's kind of an industrial design preference um it depends on what you're doing so make sure that you're just considering whatever your end result is i'm going to take this 0.5 inches interesting so it'll let me go to one inch but it won't let me go anywhere else odd situation um, for this kind of a thing what we'll do is we'll just pull it into the slicer and we'll push it down into the bed a little bit that way I don't have to model up something else weird inside of here because this will look pretty nifty but let's go ahead and save that base there we are so that's how you can get to a cylinder and then to a dome so let's go ahead and suppress those and let's be a little bit more creative with that now um, suppress features uh, you might want to just kind of go for a more angular sort of motif. So here you would want to go for like a chamfer. Just like this and like this. Oh, let me get that other edge. Cool, we got them all. Uh, here you can go ahead and go for 50. So there you can get this sort of odd cropped uh, design. It's going into the circle on the bottom. You might want to modify that. So I'll just take this down to 40 because I don't want to go back and change that one. Um, I do want it to be symmetrical, so make sure this is an equal distance chamfer. Um, there we are, that looks much better. So you've got a nice hexagonal base for that, um, which can look quite good depending on what the, the base of the thing is. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, just like that. Um, but maybe you don't want to do even that, uh, suppress features. Maybe you want to go for something sort of pyramidal um, and just give it again, kind of that directionality that I was talking about before. Just take these up like this, like that, and then go two distance and we'll go uh, 20 and 40. Oh yeah, that looks quite good. Um, I'm gonna make this a tad more subtle. Oh, wait, no, that was not the direction I wanted to go. There we go, just like that and take that up to 50 a little bit more there's uh, uh the ratio the golden ratio and that's kind of what i'm shooting for here with these angles which is about one third and two thirds that's not quite true but you can generally notice the golden ratio just by does it look good and that kind of a thing uh that will <laughs> lead you around um but there we go so there's that design which is kind of pyramidal of course you can take these all the way down and you can take that in narrower i'm just going to call that uh the pyramid one save as so there we go um so that's looking quite good and then let's see here what else could we do here we've done the hexagonal pattern we've done kind of a pyramidal design all based around the same basic platform there um i'm going to suppress that i'm going to go back to that uh previous chamfered one and just give us a little bit something to play with here because there's a, a neat way of making kind of a faceted design um modify chamfer right here right here right here and right here, I'm gonna make that 10 actually. 
not not too darn subtle, not quite yet. But then I'll take that um, and do a chamfer right here, and we'll create sort of a fractal design, which I, I think is quite lovely. Um, let's go 25. Yeah, there we go. That's that's pretty cool. Um, let's actually go 40. Mm, 50? Too far. Oh, it's not. There we go. Just like that. Oh, that's that's quite a nifty design there. Um, I'm going to call this Pyramid 2, just right there. But then you can take this, and maybe you want to take not have any vertical edges at all. Then you can go ahead and take a chamfer, put it right here, right here, right here. And in order to kind of create a mirror look, I'm going to put it on these other sides as well. Um, the back facing side, I don't care about as much because it's it's on its own. But just add a little, just a little notch right there. Oh, that looks pretty nifty because now it's kind of like a jewel. Um, let's go ahead and add one more there for five. There we go. See, that's a, a very nice kind of a jewel design or maybe sort of an industrial sci-fi type of design. The base is still all good, still all solid. Uh, we'd want to go through it again, fill it all the sharp edges whenever you do something like this. But let's save that. Jewel one lamp base. There we go. Just like so. Um, I'm actually going to delete that one that version of it and take these in up on top more, but just at a, a different amount and go 25. There you go. There's a there's another really nifty kind of a jewel design. And then the bottoms can come in a little bit if you want to, or you can go back to these and make them a, a tad bigger, just like so. Um, oh, I want that equal distance. There we go. There we go. Just like that. Ah, that's, that's pretty nice. I like that quite a bit. That's a really nifty, it's got a, a narrow top. You, again, these the point of these bases was to not draw attention to themselves, and this is getting into something really complex, but it's sort of fun to mess with. Uh, I'm gonna take these back down to 40 so that the top is a little bit more even. Oh no, I'm gonna take that back to 15. There we go. Take that back up to 50. There we are. There we are. Now this top is a lot bigger. It doesn't draw quite as much attention. Um, this is sort of a large face right there, so I would like to take that back. Again, I would reduce this cone inside of here so that we could really take up that chamfer, and then you can create all kinds of hexagonal patterns. You could carve around the outer side with some kind of a wobble, but ultimately what I was trying to get to with this design was something very monolithic and very simple. So file, save that. We'll save that as jewel two. There we go. So. Yeah, there are uh, many ways to skin this particular cat, but hopefully this shows you kind of the way of designing and optimizing this large slot, making sure that you're filleting everything, always thinking about kind of the end goal, um, but then kind of have fun with it. The fact that 3D printing allows you to create these variations really quickly, we could theoretically take these lamp designs, post all of them for sale on some e-commerce site, um, and then whichever one does the best, you focus in on that design and then you expand it some more. So it's very easy to create new products very quickly. So hopefully that was a good little insight of how to create some new products and ways of designing quickly and getting to uh, a minimum viable product really quickly. Have a great day, everybody.